Welcome to another episode of the Scottish Property Podcast. My name's Nick Ponty. I'm here with my handsome co-host, Stephen Clark. How you doing? I think only Myers referred to me as handsome before my life. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> good, tan, mate. Good, mate. You? You're, look, you're looking tanned, fresh back from your NC500 trip with, uh, uh, with Julian there. Catching some, catching some sunny. Eh? How's things with you? I'm all good, mate. Yeah, just uh, saying to you before we start this recording about level inquiries in Glasgow. So, like, any properties that we put on for rent just going absolutely bonkers. Uh, I told you a story about a two bedroom in the West End, a thousand pounds a month for a two bedroom. So not like, out, you know, it's not cheap by any means for rent. And we put it on within two days. We've had 415 inquiries or something like that. So insane. I think we need another podcast episode where we get a chat and a bit of catch up on what's happening in the market, the interest yeah. rates, when we're going into recession and, and obviously demand and stuff like that as well and potential rent freezes that are coming in. And so Aye, it's, there's, a, there's a lot of changes in the, in the industry, isn't there? 100%. We'll do a separate episode on that. Today, on today's show, we have Ewan Dudding, uh, who I've been following for a long time. I've known him for a while, and he's doing a great... He's going at really good pace at the moment, growing his portfolio, Stephen. Yeah, he's starting to get really good. Met him. I first met him probably about two and a half years ago. I think it was just before the pandemic. He was on my mastermind group and he'd come through and have a pizza and a, and a beer with us once a month and and, and chat and, and get yourself kind of right in the network. And he, and he you can tell he had that kind of foundation and that desire to grow something big in property and, and, he, and he's willing to put the hard work and the sacrifice into it. Like, let's put a bit of uh, content in this. Ewan's only 25 now. I think he's almost just hit 20 properties in the last few years. He's, he's gathered momentum. He's... Uh, I think it's phenomenal like how he starts out because he kind of he talks about how he started with his very first property and the, the the objections that people put in their place constantly when they go out there. I'm a student, I can't get a mortgage. He just didn't say he was a student. He just there's my two jobs. I've worked two jobs. Here's what I earn. Here's my pay slips. Um, and he got his first flat and then he ended up just moving into the living room on the flats. I think it was and renting another two bedrooms out. So we basically paid his mortgage plus an income from him. That, so just a uh, just a hus a hustling young guy that's willing to make sacrifices, save up money put into his portfolio and now it's starting to pay dividends for him. It's starting to starting to starting to compound, isn't it? Yeah. So while all his other student pals were pissing up against the wall and just wasting their student loans, he's plowing his money into property and he's looking at it long term. Now I think this is great. You know, he's taking some sacrifices and you know he's been pretty frugal with his money, but eventually that'll pay off um for him and he's he's built this great portfolio so far. So uh, it's very, only very, He's not been he's not been stupid and going gung ho with either. Like he, a lot of the conversations that we spoke about there was was interest rates rises and what's happening in the marketplace and the economy and stuff like that as well. So he's very much taken a an objective point of view. He's not just been you know rose tinted glasses just in the door a few years and he's actually he's taken this seriously and he's he's, he's thinking of the bigger picture. So yeah, it's really really good to see. Yeah, very grounded guy, and it was great uh, great chat with him. So we'll just cut to the interview with uh, you and Dudding. Hope you enjoy. Ewan Dudding, welcome to the Scottish Property Podcast. How are you today? Hi, Nick. Hi, Stephen. Yeah, very, very good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on. I'm a big fan of the podcast uh, and I listen to it most weeks. So, yeah, pleasure to be here. Awesome, mate. I want to dig you up because you actually interviewed me for your podcast about <laughs> four years ago and I've never seen it. So what happened to that? <laughs> well, that's that's why I've got uh, so much respect for you guys getting this out every week for three years because uh, I, I didn't even manage to get it uh, on at all. Um, but yeah. I suppose my focus has been elsewhere. Um, but you never know, maybe, maybe in the future. Um, oh, that's so, yeah, I, would, I would like to listen to that episode, actually. Let, let, let me listen to that recording in Nick Ponty four years ago. <laughs> It's in the archives, mate. It's in the archives somewhere. <laughs> um, so we want to know, we want to dig into your backstory. You and you, you're good on social media. You post a lot of your refurbs. You operate in uh, Sterling, don't you, mainly? Mostly, yeah. Yeah, so we want to try and dig in a little bit about you, you know, who you are, what, where you came from, what you're doing now. Um, uh, you, you're a bit of a networker as well, mate. You, you were telling us there, you ran a curry night uh, networking event and you had, what was it, 35? Yeah, I think 35 people signed up and paid, and I think maybe 31 or two on the night, yeah. So this was your curry night that you do? Yeah, so that was a quick tour around one of my projects, and then we just went all went for a curry. So I initially got that idea back in February when 
I was at my friend's restaurant and they were saying they were quite quiet and obviously six months ago feels like a long time ago now, but it was still coming out of that sort of COVID sort of time. Um, and I just bought a flat above that restaurant. So I thought, okay, well, maybe I can get uh, some people run to the flat and then we can all have a curry. So I did that six months ago and I've had so many people asking me to do it again. So yeah, we, we did a second one, a different place and different flat. We've got a bit of competition on the networking circuit here, Stephen. We're, we're only offering team biscuits at ours. We need to step up. <laughs> nah, bro, man. It's good because there's not there's not much in still at all. There's not much like a community around there. Most people have to travel to Glasgow mm. or, or through the don't they? Well, that's it. Because I, I did come to the one in Renfrew, the one in Glasgow, but I mean, I quite like to chat to everyone. And when it gets late on, you keep chatting and then it's like 11 o'clock and you get home at midnight and then you're up at like half six for work you know so it's quite good for me selfishly for me locally and i suppose for other people that live nearby yeah yeah absolutely so t- tell us a bit more about your, your background what got you started in property and what was your kind of the thing that piqued your interest to get involved in property um so i first got um probably interested in property maybe around it was probably late 2017 so i was maybe about 20 years old at the time uh, so prior to that i sort of grew up a uh, single parent uh, just my mom, not a lot of money. So I think from, it was almost inbuilt in me that um, I would always save. So for example, I remember um, thinking, well, there's some, there's lots of cereal and food in the cupboard. So I may as well save my lunch money. So I think for a whole year, I saved up my lunch money at school and uh, I had about 170 pounds. And then after that, I'd just go home at four o'clock and just binge eat. And then I would get my dinner at five anyway. So it, it was great. So that's kind of where it started. And I suppose, uh, when I got my first job, it was I was probably about 15 and I was making £3.75 per hour. And then I was delighted at that though, because then I was making £40 a week. And then I was like, oh shit, like I can buy myself a new pair of trainers every week. And like back then I would always get it, but you may be waiting for a birthday or waiting for Christmas and stuff. So um, that was kind of what I got, kind of sparked my interest. And I suppose from there, I was just always sort of working and uh, saving money. And cut long story short, um, I got a job at a hospital, which was um, quite good money at the time, uh, double time at weekends. And that was kind of coinciding with me going to university. So then when I went to university, I got another job Monday to Friday. But then I also had my student bursary because I grew up in a single parent background. So that was just free money from the government. And then after that, at May every year, I would take my £5,000 student loan because I've seen everyone else take a student loan and they're all spending it. And I didn't actually need it because I had two jobs and a bursary. So I thought, well, I may as well take that. So long story short, after maybe probably about late 2017, I was probably about 20 years old and I had about 20 grand. And I was like, well, I need to work out where to put this. And then it was always in my head, I should probably invest. Um, and then hopefully you do it early enough and you don't need to sort of say, be that whole typical thing where you're 70 years old and you and, and you can't retire, etc. So the first protocol was to sort of learn about property. So I listened to a podcast and then that put me onto a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then I sort of learned that you can put your money in, do a refurb, pull your money out. And then I was thinking, well, there's not much point researching anything else right now because that's that's what I need to do, you know? So that's sort of uh, what I went, went ahead and did. So I bought my first property uh, June, June University in third year, yeah. And this is when you were still in university? Yeah, yeah, so I was in, I was in third year and I thought, because when you Google it online, it says you can't get a student mortgage, because I'm Googling like student mortgages, student mortgages, and apparently you, you can't get one. Um, and then there's all these schemes, but it's, it's that, that was basically where your parents were guaranteeing it. And I was like, well, that's not that's not probably going to happen because the incomes are low. So, but then I thought, well, wait a minute, I'm working all these hours, I'm making all this money. I so what if I just don't tell the bank I'm a student? So that's what I did. Um, I just like, well, I'm, I work full time. Here's all my income. Brilliant. And I remember, uh, I remember a few years ago when you were at the at my mastermind group, we're having pizza. Tell everybody how you, how you got your rental income from from this property that you. I, I thought well, it was. It's, uh, it's, it's actually it's made me so much. So I still do that, Stephen. I still rent out bedrooms in my own flat. Uh, um, so what I did with that, my plan was to like kind of do it as a residential, then move away. And I thought, wait a minute, I can make so much more money living here. So. Um, at the time, I rented out like two bedrooms for like three fifty each. And bear in mind, I went from paying five hundred rent to having a mortgage that was two hundred and fifty pound, and then you're making seven hundred pound cash flow. And, and who as that, tenants that you charged? Sorry. 
who was one of those tenants that you charged? Oh well, well as as well, well that, this was four years ago, right? So as it's kind of gone, the three hundred pound rooms are now four hundred pounds. But I've also uh, met a girlfriend, and she pays me two hundred pounds for half my bed. So um, <laughs> it's like again a thousand pound a month, so it's, it's quite good, yeah. So I, think, I think it, I mean, that's brilliant. Uh, it's a great way of getting started, and I don't know why not like more young people don't do it this way because I think in America they call it like house hacking or something like, don't they? Um, and it's quite a kind of it's a good strategy. So it's not really one that you hear too much about, but I think this is a great way of getting started out. Absolutely, yeah. and, and I, lo- I love the kind of the ingenuity of the of the you can't get a mortgage as a student bill i'm not a student i've got two jobs and here's my income and okay you don't need to know about that part-time part of my life i'm i, I work you know these hours and there's my income i think that's brilliant um yeah so when you when you were at uni like all your mates were they all kind of pissing their student loans away and you were, were you quite well, of course yeah because i mean i grew up like debt is like so you can't touch debt debt's really bad and my mum was about to get a second job when i went to uni to basically say, don't take your student loan and everything. And and when I went to uni, I ended up getting a second job. So I was like, well, you don't have to. But then I'm looking around all my flatmates and I'm like, when I'm working, they're all just playing FIFA and they're all taking a student loan. And I was like, wait a minute. And then I actually started researching it and it's, it's almost free money, you know, uh, when you actually start researching it, especially in Scotland. Um, you know, you only start paying a certain percentage over 21 grand a year, et cetera, et cetera. And when you think about it, if you could do that, I missed the first year because my mum my put the fear into me. But if you could do that four years at uni, you're mm. talking about £20,000, you know? And at least you've got like an asset and you've not just got a huge big lump of debt to pay off. At least uh, you've got something to show for it. Um, so, and that first one you bought, did, did you part? Did you kind of research it right and negotiate the price right or do any kind of renovation? It was just a case of parking this 20 grand you had saved into a, a flat and get the return from it. No, well, I, I knew my numbers because it was just a sort of local, because obviously you're learning about property, you know what your friends are paying rent, you're checking right move. So um, I, I did actually, it was one of my, probably my best deals, to be honest, um, which was probably maybe a bit of luck just with the market back then. But um, also, um, I, do, do you know what it was? I actually completely undervalued it because I was comparing it to, it's a large two-bedroom flat, but I was comparing it to like, 55 60 square meter flats but this one's massive it's 74 so i did my numbers basically on that i bought it 74 grand i spent 12 on it and then i was thinking i'd get it remortgaged at 110 sorry 100 grand but i got 107 so i got seven thousand more so it actually worked out i worked out really well and the bedrooms are massive so i just put a bed in the living room which make that a bedroom as well so it's almost like you've got a smaller kitchen diner and three big rooms and yeah. so yeah it, it worked quite well i like yeah, your but... styles where, where was this property this first one that you bought it's in Stirling. right okay uh so what did you end up sleeping in the living room then and renting out the two bedrooms um so I, I slept in one of the bedrooms and i rented out uh, the living room and the other one so my bedroom's off the boiler cupboard so i, I wanted uh, access to the heating um, so that's why I didn't take the big living room, you know. <laughs> so you can keep you the, any... the, the control temperature then. Ah, <laughs> uh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> and what's the kind of like? I mean, like without going into, we don't want to get into trouble in like that. But like, what's the implications for HMO regulations and that with that sort of thing? Or did you just at that point? Um, just, you know... Well, I mean, I think as a student, you're just like you're going from the uh, like pretty bad student halls to something that's all been done up really nice so you're quite happy but yeah as because it's my own home it's yeah. just lodgers you know right. so that, that's what that's how you bypass that it's just lodgers it's my own home but yeah that's cool man that's brilliant really legit and uh and obviously it got you that start so does that mean mm-hmm. that you were I mean, what age were you at that point yeah, i was 20 just going on 21 20 and, and you got that mortgage okay that wasn't too too difficult like what would you yeah well i bought it put- yeah, um, I mean, to be honest, for me, it would probably just be, yeah, kind of, especially early on, just save money, you know, like cut expenses, work quite hard, um, because the the property was worth, or I bought it for 74500 but I was putting down a 20% deposit, so the bank was really comfortable, and uh, my job was a zero-hour contract job, but because I had such consistent pay slips for 12 months, they accepted it, you know, so... I would say to people, if you can, yeah, maybe buy your own home like that and then get some friends in or some flatmates. And it doesn't even need to be people you know. You know, like my, all my flatmates have been great. And even now, they're all 
they're all great. So, yeah, right. so, it's a good way to do it. So how, how did you kind of build the momentum from that, that very first one then? Did you, did you refinance and get the money back out? Or? Yeah, so I had to, because I, had, I was going into my fourth year of uni, I had to wait another year until I sort of refinanced and everything. So a year later, I refinanced and got like 30 grand back out, which was great. And then obviously during this time, I was sort of learning about property and everything. I'd like done a little deal with my brother, um, had then borrowed money off my brother's friend and got a flat under offer to flip, but then it fell through um, because the seller went back to Pakistan or something. So I think it was a bit kind of, I'm a little bit all over the place, yeah. but I knew I wanted to sort of build a portfolio and I was in my fourth year of uni. So at this point I was thinking to kind of try the property thing, you're trying different things or to get a job. So at that point I thought it was probably best to get a job to do and do the property alongside that. So um, it took me probably about nine months to sort of kind of get the job I wanted and everything like that, which, um, which kind of took us forward a little bit. So that took us maybe two years later almost, uh, probably just the start uh, of 2020. That's good, mate. And, and then did you, and then did you find your next buy to let deal after that? Yeah, yeah. So after that, it was. Um, I mean, after that, it was the sort of just before the whole pandemic thing. So again, I was looking a few under offer. Then pandemic happens, pulled out, and then it's uh, it was a bit crazy those first few months after the pandemic. So, um, but then I thought, oh, do you know what? I just need to pull the trigger and get started here. So, by that point, I had I had a good amount of savings. I'd obviously had that thirty grand. And I was still working. So when I graduated, I didn't want to sort of leave that hospital job because it was making me a lot of money. So I actually worked two jobs after I graduated. And I thought, I'm a student now. So if I just don't, if I just live how I'm living now, then I'm going to be able to save a lot of money, you know? So I just didn't increase my lifestyle, still rented out rooms, still worked a second job, and then did the job during the week. Um, so I did that. So I was able to save quite a bit. And then I suppose by the time I got started, um, I just bought a simple little flat because I was struggling to do what I'd done before because mm-hmm. I'd done this one where I was moving into and got most of my money out and then I did one with my brother and got most of the money out of that. So this was two years later after COVID, I was struggling. So I just bought a simple turnkey buy to let and then I thought I better get a second one because I was now in the company, I didn't want a tenant leaving. So I bought a second one and then I suppose from after that, I found a flat and it was quite cheap and then I just borrowed money to get that deal done. And as from then, I've just rolled the money and then took on sort of more private investment. And then it's just been, I mean, it's just kind of grown quite fast since then, yeah. Nice, man. Yeah. So where are you sitting at now then with your portfolio? Um, so it's, a, well, it's technically at 20 in terms of stuff owned and rented, but I've got two settled in the next two weeks. So awesome. i just say Do you do soon. any kind of like, you know, uh, joint ventures or private investor financing or anything like that? Uh, yeah, so I've borrowed, um, I borrowed about maybe ninety thousand um, from a friend from university. Uh, so his granddad sadly passed away, and he sort of gave me the money. So that, so, so that really allowed me to grow because I had what I'd built up myself. But then I was able to just cash buy stuff, and uh, and keep growing it that way. So with just with his money, I think I've bought one, two, I think I bought five or six just with his money. Uh, in just over a year, maybe 15 months. So that's just been going from project to project. And I've also had my own little pot, which has been going from project to project. And, just uh, most... cash buying and then refinancing before the six months? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So I think I've done maybe, I probably did about seven or eight of them. And uh, just cash buying, as soon as you buy, start the mortgage application, and you get the guys to try finish it ASAP. And then if you're delayed a week, then you're, you delay the surveyor, and then the surveyor straight out, but then by that point, you've lined up the next property and then the money goes straight to that. So, I mean, That's you have to be quite lucky. Growth, mate. That's phenomenal growth in such a short space of time. I mean, again, like, this is why I love having these conversations with like, you know, younger people like yourself as well, because I'm quite cautious. I go very slow, you know, like Stephen's different, but like I just kind of plod along. But see, when I hear what you guys are doing, man, it really gives me a, a really, it gives me a lot of boost and incentive. So... How difficult has it been? I mean, like, obviously, like, I don't really know the sterling market, like, to get these deals because you're talking about, you know, buying them cash, doing the renovation, uh, yeah. you know, refinancing and stuff like that. Have you had any kind of challenges over the last kind of couple of years? Has it been getting harder? Um, 
I, th I think mostly I've been okay. So I, I think the least amount of money I've left in has been one thousand nine hundred, and then the most amount I've left in has been twelve thousand. So um, it's it's been. I mean, that works for me. It might not work for some people, but I mean, some of the ones in Sterling are maybe leaving in nine ten thousand. Some of the ones are they're cash flowing five hundred pound a month. So mm. for me, I'm twenty five. Hopefully, I maybe live to, or maybe I'm still active doing this till I'm say sixty five, which isn't really any age nowadays. So I'm thinking. I could leave five grand more in this one, but I'm getting double the rent for the next 40 years. Yeah. And I've just got I've just got a feeling that the total return over that 40 year period will be a lot higher on the one that I've left a little bit more in. So yeah. I've been quite flexible. And I, as it goes on, um, I've been yeah, a little bit more flexible, but the, the most I've left in is 12. But I've seemed to be, I think sometimes you do get tough moments, but then you remember like a hard moment three or four months ago where you couldn't get a deal and then suddenly two came. So I think it's hard at the beginning when you've not got that. You're like, you're like, fuck, I'm, I'm ever going to get something mm. that works for me. But is then... Your, is your kind of strategy just to acquire assets completely or do you try and sell any on or like trade any or...? Um, well, I mean, the last few years, I've pretty much just worked like a maniac. So I'm like directors loaning like two and a half grand into the company every month. Mm. And then I'm leaving little money in, but then the company's grown and then I'm getting all the rents. But I think going... So right now I've managed to self-sustain it pretty fine. Mm -hmm. And um, even with like the investors and everything like that, their money is always like liquid. It's either liquid in my bank or just coming out of a deal when I remortgage. But I think going forward, I'll probably need to trade a little bit, uh, sell some, um, just to sort of keep growing, you know, uh, for sure. What is it you do for work? What do you do? Uh, so I work, in, I work in an IFA in Edinburgh. Ah, right, okay. Well, you, that's your full-time job. So uh, decent salary. So you're able to, obviously, like you say, keep... Pumping the money in to the property. Well, yeah, that just means the salary sal is okay. But yeah, I mean, even up until a couple of months ago, I worked a second job. So mm -hmm. uh, the second job's getting put in. But yeah. then I've got the rent from, from my bedrooms. My, yeah, my bedroom and you're still, you're still, you still said you're like living frugally. And I think that's what people oh, do. Oh, yeah, yeah. As people don't, people like to kind of live month to month and whatever they earn, they're spending. But it seems like you're just saving out like the majority of it, spending very little and then putting everything into the company to grow the, grow the asset mm -hmm. base as much as you can. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of what I've done. And there's been other things. I mean, I've sourced, I've probably sourced like 15, 16 deals in the last 18 months, which has helped with income as well. I don't really, I don't really talk about that so much because probably my passion is actually buying. Yeah. But I mean, last year I even, I painted two flat closes and got paid like four grand for doing it because what I, we we're waiting, my surveyor was due to come out and we couldn't get a painter. I was like, you know what, I'll do it, because these guys are charging like £35 an hour. So there's been always like little things like that, like ducking and diving, but I mean, it's hard work, but when you look at it, you're like, shit, like... I'm that compounds like, very quickly, like, you, oh, you, you oh, can see sure. it. And how old are you just now, Ewan? Uh, 25. Right, so you can see that how much that's compounded already by just doing it for the last five, six years, just grafting, working hard, putting the money together, mm -hmm. putting in the assets, and that, that just snowballs, and it starts to take a big amount of them, as you've kind of seen in the last... Last year, yeah, no, for sure, it's been it's been crazy seeing it. I think even now, so now, a lot of my refurbs, I'm just paying with the rent, mm -hmm. you know. So the, the cash flow's coming in, and I'm just like contractors paying. So you, you you almost feel like you're not getting anywhere, although you are buying property. But yeah. I was actually I was out for dinner with my friends and um, there a weekend there, and they're like, "How much are you worth?" And I was like, "I've got no idea actually. I mean, I did do something last year. What's your net but worth? I, I won't, <laughs> well, I, I won't say obviously, but." what I noticed is it's like doubled in like nine months and mm. that kind of took me apart really like, oh fucking hell because right. you, you feel you feel skint you're yeah, always yeah. reinvesting everything but then when you see that and obviously it's, it's all on paper but it's still kind of the vindication of what you're doing yeah that's, that's a true indication of net worth as well the way I don't think a lot of people kind of get the general public kind of get that they think oh you have net worth of a million you've got a million pound in the bank no you've got a million pound <laughs> in the you know assets um, yeah. after liability so I, I think that's that's phenomenal and, and I, you, you hit the nail on the head there as well mate like about kind of remaining skin and you, you know you can do that when you're young as well you can fucking live off beans and toast and as little as possible and just pump everything in the business so it's good and you'll be able to take you and you'll be able to start enjoying those fruits of the labour in a few years time when it starts to, to snowball and, and go, keep going yeah I've I think just, so yeah I've just googled what Stephen Clark's net worth but it's come up with an American guitarist, 20.1 billion. 21, 20 billion? 20 billion, mate, but I think he died. Hopefully <laughs> that didn't Sunday. 
So uh, I, because <laughs> we always have this joke in the podcast, you know, never say how many properties he's on. So that's, I wouldn't uh-huh. like on his net worth either. But I'm uh, probably, you know, I'm probably much like you, more than to keep track of it. You need, uh, you need to get your own Wikipedia page, mate. <laughs> uh, right, Kim, so this is interesting chat because uh, as somebody who doesn't do any kind of the private investor finance, I'm always keen to learn from people like yourself. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, Stephen and you and you'll be able to answer this question, right? So say like Ewan's getting 90 grand <laughs> from a friend or something like that, which he's using to invest and, um, you know, do the buy, renovate, refinance, buy cash, etc. How does it work then? If he's like saying... Ewan, if you're uh, leaving 12k uh, mm-hmm. after your refinance and stuff like that, so how you know, say that happens a couple of times. So what happens to the the guy who's lent you the 90 grand? Like, how will he get his money back? Well, I, I think for me, I, I've started it by uh, a lot of my own money, you know. So that's right. um, so, that's, so that's kind of how I've done it. And the way I've looked at it is, I mean, I'm speaking to another local investor. And, and she was basically saying, look, if you're buying stuff here, you're kind of leaving in a, probably a minimum of 10 grand. So the, the way I looked at it is, well, how do I how do I beat that deficit, you know? Yeah. Because obviously, if you've got like 50 properties and or 40 or even 30 rented well, you're not really bothered about, or you probably aren't bothered about leaving 10 grand in or whatever, unless you're borrowing a lot, a lot of money, because the rents are just coming in and they're just paying that off. Sure. So, so that's how you're so funding all, that, that deficit? Yeah. So I had my own, I had my own capital. So I probably had about 100 grand after the whole COVID thing saved up. So that's that's kind of in it all amongst it somewhere. And then I'm also saving every month, like directors loaning into the company. And now now I'm at the stage with all the rents and stuff that, I mean, it's, it'll, be, it'll be two or three months to sort of pay that off, no problem, you know, so. Um, Have you got a yeah. kind of typical kind of like vanilla style uh, property that you're buying now? I mean, you've got 20 now, so is it just... Like, are you houses, flats, two bedrooms? Yeah, it's mostly mostly one and two bedroom flats, but mostly like like lower end, but still okay quality. So I think probably price wise, probably the average is maybe 90,000. 90, so I think some of, I think the cheapest one's 65. And then I think after that, apart from that, the cheapest is 85. So a lot of them are maybe 85 to 110. What's uh, um, your average kind of cash flow per property then? Um, I mean, it, it does it does change. Obviously, I've, I've just bought a, a nine unit portfolio, which is outside Stirling, so that's kind of warped the stats a little bit. But from uh, what what I've been buying in terms of these BRRs, probably about four to four hundred to four fifty with a lot of them. Yeah. Do you that, manage that's yourself or do you use a letting agent? Uh, yeah, no, I use I use a letting agent. Yeah, uh, for sure. I think that's been. I think the team, yeah, I think that's been a key thing that having a good letting agent, a good mortgage broker, solicitor, and people say that it's a bit of a cliche. And obviously at the start, you get told like, it's like your power team and stuff like that. And then you're like, you probably phone a mortgage broker and then you can't buy it. And then six months later, you're phoning the same guy. But I think when you're actually, when you're buying stuff like two, three a month, then I think you, you really do need a uh, sort of good professional advisor. So yeah, use a letting agent for sure. And no, tell us about that portfolio then, because that's, you know, like you hear everybody talking about portfolios now and Stephen's put a few posts on there uh, looking for portfolios as well. How did that come about? How was that a scary process buying nine properties at a time? Like, tell us a little bit about that process. Um, yeah, so it, ca- it came across my desk and uh, it was basically a, it was a, a good discount. I think it was 15% discount and it was over six so it was nine units, so there was a lot of tax saving there. So I thought, well, yeah, this is interesting. It was kind of within the local area, but um, sort of a few towns along. Um, and yeah, I'd be, I mean, I just sort of looked at it. The only, um, I suppose when I was looking at it, the only downside was um, the cash flow wasn't quite as high because I'm used to quite high cash flow in Sterling. There's no factors in Sterling, which helps. But it was a bit more like maybe £200 per property sort of thing. So that was my only qualm about it. Um, so I suppose I had the choice about whether to buy six myself, which would have, I wouldn't have been able to buy anything else at that time, or buy nine uh, with a sort of a joint venture partner, if you like. So I chose to do the nine, and uh, the, yeah, the plan with that is to just sell a couple, recoup some money, and then just start buying again, you know? So, was that, was that yeah. set up on a separate company then, the, the joint venture one? Yeah, it was, yeah. So it was a separate company. It's somebody I've been uh, sort of spoke about doing stuff with, uh, for a while so the company was already there and everything um they, they had like, sort of refinanced a house and stuff like that i had a bit of cash 
but they were wanting to JV, but I just knew how much hard work it was. And I was just like, fuck that, you know, because I'm just doing these deals every month. And I'm like, it's enough without sort of doing that for somebody else, if you like, you know. But then this portfolio came up and I thought, well, this might be the perfect thing because instead of doing nine refurbs and uh, all the stress and everything that comes along with that, then I thought we could just buy this. It's less work for me, but there's also, like, there's a decent discount in there. So the way I looked at it is we're buying nine. If we sold five, then all the money's paid off. So we've got all the money back out, you know. Obviously, yeah. that does take time. It'll probably take one or two years to work through that. Or if we sold four and refinanced the others, um, then it would be all the money paid back too. But I think what we'll probably do is just sell two, keep the rest, and then that will just recoup the money to go again. So, yeah, I've got two two different companies, and right. they're both sort of, yeah, they're both pr pretty similar size. Nice. What was the, and, and yeah. the, the, the one block that night? Um, so it was in the same development, but it's the six in one block right. and then three in the other. How how, the, how was how was that for lending and for like uh, concentration and stuff like that? Was it tricky to get a lending or was it okay? Uh, I mean, I mean, the lending was fine. I, I got it. I got it all agreed in February, but I think whatever I'm going on to again in three years' time will be a, a little bit different, you know, because uh, obviously, um, if you're buying in with that concentricity, there is less lenders. Right. Um, so we got a mortgage at four point one, right. but. I suspect even I suspect even right now that's probably going to be late fives, early sixes, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's something that. But again, we're we're fixed for three years, so we've got a lot of time to sort of work this stuff out, and then uh, things are changing all the time. I I, get, I collect the cash, we'll perhaps sell a couple as well, two or three of them as well. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure, yeah. And if you can sell, be strategic with what ones we sell, then uh, again it reduces that for lenders. So yeah, but I mean, who knows? It could have a crash and then the rates reduce again. But at the time. Obviously, 4.1% was quite expensive, but to me, it was cheap, you know. It's, a lot it's, of it's funny how, like, seven, eight months later, that's now become actually quite cheap lending, whereas, like, back in February, mm. that'd be quite expensive lending. You're like, fuck that, I'm not paying that. You're getting it for 2.75, yeah. I think we're getting it at the start of the year. So, I, that's, uh, that's interesting. It was crazy. That. It was mm. crazy. I mean, and a lot of my mortgages I did do with, like, the likes of Shawbrook and sort of lending, but, like, the proper, like, sort of commercial lenders. And the only reason I did it was they're a lot easier to deal with. Because I was like, I can get in and out a deal within like, do you know what I mean? Uh, quite quickly, and they're not messing about, and they're still giving rates at 4.1, 4.2. But obviously now that's all sort of increased quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, just on the subject of rising interest rates, because it's obviously a very topical subject, and I'm sure at your curry night last night there was people talking about that as well. So like, what is your take on it? Do you panic when you start like looking at things? Uh, it sounds like you're obviously very much long-term focused so you know that's obviously a good thing and you've got a full-time job as well so what's your give us some words of what, what's going through your head at the moment yeah well it's, it's probably the first time since I got interested in property that I've been sort of bearish you know because when I even after the sort of COVID uh, the COVID lockdown I remember go-karting with some friends and there was like a local stage in there and he was like, it's all going to crash, it's going to crash. And I was like, well, I don't think so, you know. Yeah. Um, but now, I mean, who knows? But I think what's almost fact is the base rate looks like it's going to hit 3% by the end of the year. And think about it, if we're in this limited company, sort of buy-to-let world, when the, the interest rate was at 0.1, it's probably the cheapest sort of lending if you've got a good portfolio, a bigger portfolio is at 3.7, 3.6, you know. I know there was some late twos in that, but I think that was just, a nature of time. So I'm thinking uh, if base rates go up to three by the end of the year, and then the cheapest sort of money is going to be six and a half, mm -hmm. you know, so that's Have sort you of... plugged in the numbers yet? Have you plugged in the numbers? What... Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think the saving grace is obviously a lot of my fixes are five years. Uh, some are two, but I already remortgaged them a couple of months ago because I could see this coming. So I've even fixed them at low fours, which is good. Um, but I, I mean, I suppose it just see how it goes i think right now the minimum is like low fives and most of my stuff works fine at that and then but if that starts going to low sixes and then i'm, I'm a little bit more selective in what i buy you know it'll need to be smaller yeah. like very high yielding flats uh, because i mean some of mine i've got a flat that rents for 800 and the value is 85 grand you know so that's that's something like wow, that still works that's at some that. that's some uh, phenomenal that, year, isn't it? That's sterling, right? So, like, you obviously got huge demand with student population as well. Do you get a lot of students too? Uh, yeah, it's most, most of the tenants are all students, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so that's uh, most and of them. And is it right that Stirling, Stirling Council aren't granting any more HMO licences? 
Um, yeah, that's 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 been true since I've got involved in property. So I only buy sort of one and two bedroom flats. Yeah, so that'll keep um, the demand really high. I'm assuming then for for the smaller flats in the city centre still, and for the uni students. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it will in terms of HMOs. Obviously, I mean, students are so it can be a fickle market with people coming and going and stuff. But um, I mean, the way I mean, just even cut back to the interest rate. The way I see it is it's high yielding. But even with this whole energy crisis, you've got people. I mean, they don't pay council tax. They're funded by the government. They're funded by their mum and dad. Yeah. So hopefully, I mean, obviously they all might just go home, but hopefully I'll be okay. But um, and yeah, in terms of the interest rates, it's six percent. I'm okay, but see when it starts to go up to seven, then I, I don't know. I think a lot of people are. I mean, I probably won't be buying. I might buy some things, but I think it changes the whole dynamics. Uh, you yeah. know, but we'll, we'll, we'll just need to wait and see. I think. I think, I think what you happens with the rent as well. Sorry, mate. Go for it. Yeah. Sorry, I, I was similar. I'm very similar to you when you just said that. Like, I did numbers at seven percent, kind of like not too bad. Like then I put an eight percent. That was like <laughs> break even. Anything past eight percent, that's just a total shambles. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, uh, let's just see what happens. We just need. To, I mean, some some people predicting base rate to go up to four and a half percent. Some economists. Do you know what I mean? Well, that- like nothing That's is impossible, market. right? Nothing is impossible in this in this like yeah. landscape that we're now entering into. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the market's saying by August next year, it, uh, the market's predicting it'll be four and a half percent. Which again, you're doing your numbers and you're thinking, well, that's uh, that's that's into your eights and nines, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting times ahead for sure. Have you considered yeah. any other types of uh, of investing? At all? Um, not yet, but I probably, I probably will. I probably maybe. Think, I mean, my plan was to get, say, both companies to twenty units each. So, I just think that's a kind of, that's a good amount. So I'll probably yeah. still do that. It might take me a little bit longer. Maybe I need to leverage to sixty percent or whatever, or maybe fifty percent. But that is still the plan. But um, right now, that's that that is probably still the focus, to be honest. And then going forward, I mean, what else? I mean. You, that that's the issue right now with inflation so high. Is like, what else do you invest in? Um, I heard someone describe it as like it's a case of who can lose the least, you know. So I think if you can just do, you know I mean, be a, be a bit more sensible um, and everything the next few years, then I mean, there's not a lot. There's not a lot else. I mean, the stock market's down ten percent and inflation's at ten percent. So I can see that. I see that. I kind of get your point as well. I see this as a a time where. People need to have the right network and people around them maybe having these conversations and listening to podcasts and getting a bit of education and being smarter because I think a couple of years ago you can get away with just jumping into property with no knowledge or experience and and not fucking it because the, the market's went up 25-30% in the last two years. So anything that's happened, you've you, you've survived, you've, you've been okay. But I think now is going to be a trickier time whereas if people are kind of just jumping into something without you know, doing their numbers to seven or eight percent interest and see if that affects their portfolio or performance of that property. And this is where people are going to get in a hot war, I think. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And you'll probably be noticing it as well when you're doing a lot of mortgages, you're seeing them, you're seeing them creep up month to month. You're like, wow, that affects that one at four percent in May. Now that's six, you know, uh, and you're seeing that. But I think if you're not actually active and you're looking to say get your first property, you're maybe not quite realizing how expensive debt's getting, but. Um, yeah, I, I do. I do probably feel for people that are maybe just getting started right now. I think it's, I think it's very, very tough. You know, it's still hard to buy. The rates are shooting up. Uh, but I think it's like, it's like, I mean, it's investment, and it's probably bringing a bit of realism back into the market. You know. Yeah. Hundred percent. And uh, nobody, yeah, ever, nobody ever said that property was easy and it was a get rich quick. Well, there are people that say that, but we yeah. don't say that. No, <laughs> Do yeah. you know what I mean? Um, what? <laughs> Sorry, mate. On you, Steve. <laughs> so I was just going to agree with you and say it's hard work and just like like you and stuff going on most of his interview is talking about you know two jobs saving a ring he's got like we've all been there to try and build something up like it's a long long slog it's a long work and you've got to kind of, kind of be in it for the, with the, the mindset you're in it for a long term not just in and out in a couple of years so did anybody ever call you a tight bastard then when you're not like spending any money and you're just putting it all into property <laughs> it reminds me of Sam Dyer a little bit <laughs> And and like um, my question is, and you know, if that is so, you know, and you've literally been quite frugal with your, your money, which nothing wrong with, because obviously 
I admire that mm-hmm. because you're yeah. obviously thinking long term. You've got a vision in mind, which I absolutely love. But at what point do you say to yourself, right, I'm going to start really enjoying my life now? Or are you already <laughs> enjoying it? Like, could it, what, what's your kind of long term goal? Um, well, no, that's a good point. And the way I see it, because obviously you, you don't want to be that sort of miserable bastard in his 50s is still fucking miserable, you know? Like, and you, and you, and you do see people like that. So I think it's just, as I mean, especially I mean, in your early 20s, your lifestyle is going to start increasing as you make more money. But I'm thinking, well, if everybody's here, maybe I can just be a little bit below that and just increase at a slower level. So a good example is so that flat where I rented a room, so I'm actually moving out. Uh, next month so that will be like my first my first little flat it'll be the first time i've had a living room for seven years since i left home because the landlord before me did rent out the living room as well which gave me the idea mm-hmm. um so that so that'll be exciting so i'll have my own little flat uh we've done it i've posted pictures actually we've done it really nice but again there's a little bit of investment to it so uh we bought that uh we bought it at 88,000 and uh did a big big refurb and we're going to remortgage it now but during summer um, I've sort of made a little bit of money on Airbnb and stuff. So um, that's sort of, we're moving to the house, but it's not just like, you're not just paying all this money, you know? So I think I think that'll be a thing for sure. Um, what do you think then? Oh, you'll come back in that one, June. Um I've had, I initially done my numbers to one, two, five. Mm-hmm. So obviously you're not like, you're still, you're leaving quite a lot in, but it's yeah. your own home. So you're not getting a bit out. So I thought even if I could pay for the refurb, but I've had a few estate agents and out, out and stuff, and they're thinking maybe 130, 135, just because of the standard and because yeah. prices are, the prices are just like where I am now. The prices are just shooting up. Obviously, I mentioned a couple of sort of yields I'm getting. I don't think they're the values. Like a surveyor's value that that 12 months ago, but is is completely undervalued. You know, so I think maybe 125, 130 uh, minimum. So 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 that that'll be good, and we'll have our own little flat and be my girlfriend. So that'll be nice, but. Um, I think, right. yeah, I'm trying to think what else. I started sourcing this month, so I've kind of, I think I've four deals for clients go through, and that's been quite nice because obviously investing, you're just reinvesting everything, but you're going to get a few sourcing fees in, you're like, oh, fuck, I might go treat myself to a dinner or something, you know, so I've been a out dinner. for quite a lot this month. <laughs> <I can't. laughs> uh, well, that's it, and the way I've seen it, it was, always, it was only ever short term because once, I say you had like 15, 20 units and that, that's all sort of self-sustaining, you know. That that's so I, I wouldn't probably want to go full time in property and sort of live off the rental income. Yeah, but what yeah. I can do is keep my model of say buying and leaving five, ten, fifteen grand in a deal mm. uh, is totally fine because you've got all the rents coming in, you know. I think I think that's so sensible. Like it's something, you know, when I quit offshore, like you can rely on the rental income. I think it's the only time I've ever done it and I really hated it. I didn't like it. It, it isn't as as regular as you would like it to be, you know, there's always going to be a maintenance issue, avoid something happening in parts of the portfolio. So I think that's quite a, quite a clever strategy. So is that is that the plan going forward for you then? Just kind of get get these two companies to twenty units, and have you got a kind of time frame roughly on what you'd like to try and achieve it? Um, great question. So I was thinking probably maybe two, maybe two years, hopefully. But this is maybe probably three years as soon as I take on no more debt, because obviously if you take if you take on more investment, it completely changes things because you can grow a lot more. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I just based on in terms of my calculations, I just based on everything with the money I've got right now, uh, because who knows somebody might come tomorrow and, and invest a hundred grand. But right now I've, I was thinking two to three years, but that might we'll just see how the next few months play out. That might um, increase, but I still the goal doesn't change. But maybe maybe you're leaving like a little bit more money in with this sort of and taking on less debt, paying off a little bit more debt, keeping more cash. You know. I I am. Sorry, I've totally lost my chain of thought there. <laughs> no, you're not. It's all very... It's, it's, yeah, I was it's just all... going to say, I mean, it's a, what age are you now, by the way? Uh, 25, Nick. 25. Right, okay, so that's great. You're getting your own sort of, your own home now, your own space. Uh-huh. Uh, the girlfriend will be glad of that as well. She'll be glad she's going to get bought a meal now as well. Listen to this podcast. She's going to get taken out for dinner now as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the only bad thing is, uh, so... She had um she ended up doing an extra year at university and she didn't think she'd get a student loan. But then she found out the last minute she's getting a student loan. And I'm like, you can't I was like, you can't spend that because you weren't you're expecting to get that five grand. And now you're just getting it. So no, you you're not spending that. So I was like, give it to me. So I used it in my projects and stuff. And uh, 
and give it to me and we can put that into something. And she, she hated me for three months. She's like, I feel like you, I feel like you're stealing money off me and I've got, I've not got this money. But then we bought, that was her sort of deposit towards the flat, which was great. But now we're, um, now we're remortgaging it. She's already spent the remortgage money. So she wants to buy like a fucking dog now. So it's came <laughs> back and, it's came back and bit me, but, um, Lovely. yeah. But it's the dog these days, by the way. What kind of dog are you going for? Oh, she wants one of these like like Instagram dogs, like I think it's a chow chow or something, like two oh, grand or something like that, you know. I, I get I get ripped from my family, like because my, my Jack Russell's uh, 14 in December and everyone calls him the budget dog because I've never I've never bought pet insurance for him ever. He's full, <laughs> he, he fell off cliffs, he's 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 pretty much a fucking cat, he's had like nine lives, but this week he's finally going to the vet to get his balls packed up and I'm like it's going to cost me 150 quid. Jesus Christ. Like this. Wow. He's starting to cost me money. And they're all like, you tight bastard. Like, he's been a budget for <laughs> 14 years, the poor thing. <laughs> Is he allowed inside I... your new motor and your new Hell car? No. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that, no. Um, listen, Ewan, what would you say to all the young ones listening to this? You know, like, you know, I say young ones. I don't mean that. Um, you know, you're 25. You've done a lot so far. Heck of a lot more than I ever did at that age. So... Uh, you know, people that are starting out, is there anything, advice, tips, useful hacks or anything like that? What's the one thing that you would say or a couple of things you would say to people? You said save, you know, that would be mm-hmm. one of the ones that I would take from this as well. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's so many little hacks and a lot of stuff you only see when you're in and out in deals. That's when you start picking up and you see valuations. So there's, there's so much stuff to it. Uh, that you couldn't possibly touch in everything, but I suppose, I, I, yeah, Nick, I would just say save. So I mean, you, yes, you can you can raise money and try raise money for sure. I mean, I've raised three hundred thousand pounds, so that that that's been great. But to be honest, um, I think start off with saving because stuff you, you're going to get hit with stuff and things won't go to plan. But if you've got that savings buffer, then great. And then, by the way, if you can find an investor, well, you saved up twenty grand, so then you can go buy your first one. But I think probably right now the important thing is to really think long term. Like I think Stephen's bang on with what he said uh, earlier on. Like you could, I mean, now you're seeing rates go up. You could kind of get away with murder a couple of years ago, um, and just t- I mean you're fixing stuff at like very very two point sevens and stuff like that. But I think um, I think over the next few years, I think just look, think very long term. Think twenty years and focus on stuff outside of property to sort of cash flow everything. You know. Mm. Like, yeah, you seem you seem very uh, like dedicated and focused on like you kind of touched on right at the start of the interview talking about <clears throat> you read Rich Dad Poor Dad you realised that you can do a renovation get your money back out and you're like right fuck it there's no point in learning and reading anything else this is what I'm doing you've got your your kind of target your goals sitting there for these kind of forty units where do you see yourself going because uh, I mean that if that takes you a couple of years you're still only twenty seven you're still going to work full time what what do you think the next step will be where do you think you'll go to in your property kind of journey after that. Yeah, great question. So I have got a plan. I want like a minimum of say 200 to 300 units. Mm-hmm. And I don't know when that will happen. It'll probably be somewhere between 30 and 40, just uh, sort of looking at it now, hopefully. Um, and the, the reason I want that sort of size is I think it's still sort of manageable. It's not ridiculous, but also I sort of see where things are going in the government. You know, I see the taxation, I see rent controls, I see articles about selling your properties at 20% discount to tenants. And I sort of think, well, well, if all of that stuff happens, do I still want to be in this business? Well, maybe not, but I am quite passionate and interested in it, so I do. So I, I think, well, if you've got that, if you've got a decent-sized portfolio, you're not over-leveraged, mm. then you can kind of withstand all this stuff, you know? So do you think, it's like the big corporates and that, they're not bothered about sort of regulation and stuff like that, or the older landlords who are sitting with a couple hundred properties at like 40% debt on them, they're not that bothered either because their cash flow is great. They've got hardly any debt. They could easily wipe that debt out by selling some. If their tenants wanted to buy properties at 20% discount, they could probably still do that and still grow. Mm-hmm. So um, so yeah, that's the buy to let side. And I suppose you're right, Stephen, it has been it has been a big focus and it's probably, probably other parts of, uh, say, other interests, other sort of parts of my life has not been focused on as much stuff. So Maybe once I feel like it's starting to sort of grow arms and legs, then maybe put a little bit of time and focus into other things. But yeah, so I'm not sure what, but I've got lots of different interests anyway. So yeah. Great Thank stuff, you. man. No, it's, it's been great chatting to you. Where can people uh, follow your progress then? 
Um, Instagram's probably the best place. So um, yeah, follow me on Instagram. Um, if you if you I can uh, help in any way, then like ask me a question. If I don't reply, just ask me again, and uh, I'll answer. But um, yeah, Instagram's sort of where I hang out, guys. Brilliant. Great stuff. Well, thanks for joining us in the Scottish Property Podcast. We appreciate your uh, posting on the group as well, because it's always good to get, you know, what you're up to and your projects. And you're quite good with that way as well. So keep up the great content, man, and uh, hopefully speak to you in person again soon. Yeah, thanks for yeah, joining us. Appreciate it, Ewan. Thank Cheers. You. Thank you, guys. Thanks. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Ewan Dudding. I know myself and Nick did. We love chatting with people like that. It's just great to see to hear young inspiring guys that are just going out going out going after it and and making some moves and uh and property investment guys as always thanks for your support get on to the scottish property podcast website where we've got links to all our events the first wednesday of each month we do an in-person networking event we've got anything from between 30 to 70 people in the room at all the different venues around the country. So we've got Aberdeen, Dundee, Edinburgh and Glasgow. And we love building the community, guys. The conversations at these events are brilliant and there's some great things happening. Yeah, absolutely, guys. It doesn't matter if you've already, if you're already experienced in property or you're just starting out and you want to learn more. These are the places to get in get in these rooms, listen to, listen to the speakers, listen to the hosts and, and have conversations. It's a great place to start. Great stuff. Thanks, as always. And we'll speak to you again next week. Thanks, guys.